Welcome to the IBA Tampa Bay, Florida chapter. This is our study group for July 8th, 2024. I am so excited to have you attend. Uh, today is our 129th class. We are going to be going over the BABOC, the Business Analysis Body of Knowledge, uh, chapter six for Knowledge Area 4, Strategy Analysis. Uh, my name is Thea Soren. I'm the president and the vice president of career and professional development for our chapter. All that means is I'm here to serve you. Uh, if you need something, if you need encouragement, if you need career advice, if you need uh, use cases uh, looked at, that's my job. So reach out to me on LinkedIn and I will be happy to help you. If you have suggestions on how we can do better, I wanna hear it. We are a volunteer led organization. Uh, we have Cliff who's our vice president of marketing and membership, Yulia, our vice president of finance, and then we have our board members at large Vivian, Uche, Esther, and Alicia. They have done a fantastic job for us. You're here. That means that they've done their job. And we are going to move forward with that. Esther, in particular, has been our Spotlight board member. Uh, we put an article out there on LinkedIn of all of the good that she's done recently. But it's also good things that you need to know about her. Uh, we see our board members, you know, on the sides up here and you don't really see who they are, but I encourage you to go out and look at what Esther has done. I recently also put one out for Alicia because Esther and Alicia have done a fantastic job on our website. They did a total revamp and they have done some really good things and they continue to do good things. So I wanted to give them a shout out. We're looking for new board members. If you're interested in participating in our board, reach out to me. Uh, we are interested in possibly having a secretary. We are looking at score board members at large. A board member at large basically means you get to do what you're interested in doing, whether it's develop a new skill, use a skill that you don't get to use otherwise, or just be a responsible member of our community. Our job here is to lift up, lift up our community and you can be a part of that. It looks really good on your resume. Uh, we want to thank our Tampa Bay Board of Directors. From our Tampa Bay Board of Directors, we want to thank you uh, for approving our bylaws. Those bylaws went out by email about three weeks ago. We had several people respond. We had 100% approval on our bylaws. We are now moving forward and we really appreciate your involvement. Uh, our mission here for Tampa Bay is goes far beyond Tampa Bay. We, want, we have members all over the world on I think every continent now, and some of the members don't get to participate in person because our this time is exactly in the middle of their night, but they watch our videos. And they very often reach out and say, thank you for what you do. Uh, we couldn't have passed our certifications without your involvement. And so we wanna continue to be here for you. So no matter where in the world you live, if you don't have a chapter, you're welcome to join our chapter. Uh, we try to serve our, our people and whatever you need, let us know. We've given you a variety of ways to reach us. Uh, this Zoom online is probably a little bit different now, um, but you do have our this normal regular Babox study group every Thursday from seven to 8 p.m. We have our LinkedIn groups, we have Meetup, we have study group materials, which includes infographics, um, spreadsheets, things that other people have made to help them learn and then articles and magazines and all kinds of stuff in our Google Drive. We also have minis recorded on the uh, YouTube and we also have our IBA website. Uh, if you're interested in meeting with other business analysts in the state of Florida, reach out to me. I have several people that are interested, but they need you. Uh, if you're interested in leading one of these meetings, let me know that as well. We're going to formalize this after we get a couple of groups started, but we need you to let me know that you're out there. Uh, we are also looking for emerging professionals. We have a couple of people interested in talking to people in college who would be able to get a very discounted rate on our IBA membership, which consider this, you're a business uh, student that you're going to be graduating, you're carrying a full load, wouldn't it be cool if you could say that you're already a member of a professional organization whenever you go to your first job interview? That's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to let people know about business analysis. If you're interested in participating in this or know someone who might be an emerging professional, please reach out to me or reach out to them and get us together. 
We are working on the ECBA, the CCBA, and the CBAP certifications. These are all out of the business analysis body of knowledge. Uh, there are four other certifications. If you're interested in any of these, either reach out to me personally on LinkedIn or uh, contact the IIBA, look at their website, and they have a lot more information about that. We like to celebrate the wins. Uh, we have, these are the folks that have reached out to say that our study group made a difference in them being able to earn their certification. Uh, if you have any questions about how to earn your certification, if we don't answer it during this meeting, reach out to me directly. Our study group advisors are people who have earned their certified business analysis professional certification and have committed to attending these meetings. The reason that's important to you is because you get an education credit hour because they are here. So we wanna thank them. Uh, Esther, Uche, Yulia, and Bob are all part of our advisor group and we do thank them greatly. Watermark Learning has given us a discount code on all of their products of 20%. It's Tampa 21. You're welcome to reach out to them and see what they have. They have also given us access to their practice test questions, which we'll be using today. And I think that's all. We had the 4th of July off. Okay, uh, I wanna show y'all just a few things real quick. If you don't know what chapter you belong to, go to the IBA website, go to your profile, go to your account and just scroll down. It will tell you which chapter you've signed up with. This will help you at least know that you are an active member. Uh, if you're not sure you're an active member, it's going to give you a membership expiry date. Mine is the 31st of this next year, and um, I'm an active member. So this tells you what your status is. For you to get a discount on your application fee and on your, um, I'm sorry, on your test, you need to have a membership to get that discount. It's a really a substantial discount. It's worth the price as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we are going to... I think I just closed the, the window I needed. Let's try that one again. Um, we were going to take a peek at Bob Churchill's website. Uh, Bob Churchill, Robert Churchill, you see him up there in the middle in the blue shirt. Uh, he's created a very extensive and very well done index of all of our recordings. Uh, it, this is rpchurchill.com. He's given you not only the Google Drive, LinkedIn, but if you scroll down, you can see right down here, here it is, links to, of my Babock knowledge area. These are hours of recordings of us doing practice test questions by knowledge area. Also, a little further down, here's techniques, at least two different explanations on every single technique, as well as a blog post that Bob has created to help you understand it better. Uh, we have interviews with UX folks in here, uh, product owners, uh, collaborative games, all kinds of things. If you all do a search for this, the bottom, concept there's an index for guest speaker. Oh, yes, here's our guest speakers. So you can see what they were actually talking about. We are looking for guest speakers for after we finish our Babox series. So if you know someone who's interested in speaking, please have them contact me and we will get started on that. Okay. Uh, well, looks like I'm gonna sign into Watermark again. So Watermark Learning, as I told you, these are practice test questions. We're gonna be doing practice test questions for the Certified Business Analysis Professional Test. And we are doing strategy analysis, correct, Bob? Yes. All right. If you have not participated in this, in this before, I'm going to read the question. I'm going to read the answers. We're going to talk about what, why one answer is better than the other. But I want to add one thing. Uh, I need you to participate. I also want us to try to identify which, not, which task in this knowledge area, we only have one knowledge area we're working on, which task the question is talking about. Sometimes it actually says the task, sometimes it alludes to the task, but if we can identify which task, it's going to alleviate a lot of our questions as far as what the answer might be, because it narrows it down. Which of the following is not a way to document a change strategy? A business case, 
product roadmap, strategic plan, or project charter? Come off mute and tell me what you think. Be if you give me the wrong answer and we learn, we still learn, right? Go ahead, Andrea. Business case. Oh, sorry, Andrea. I, I, um, I was going for product roadmap, but... <laughs> well, let's talk um, about it. Business um, case. Okay, why do you like business case uh, most? Because that's set up at the beginning of the project and isn't typically updated as the project continues to um, progress. Okay, that makes good sense. Olga, do you have anything to add on that? Oh, well, I, I was uh, was going to say that change strategy is um, should be some kind of a plan, right? And business case, um, it's it's not a plan, essentially. It's just a comparison of a different, uh, different uh, solution approaches. Am I correct? That makes good sense. Andrea, do you have a reason that we should maybe look at product roadmap instead? Well, I like what the, the teams has been saying. <laughs> I was thinking business case. Um, I was saying product roadmap because I thought that the product roadmap doesn't talk about doesn't necessarily tell you about how you're going to implement the change it just tells you what the product's going to be doing but in a way that the product roadmap will also tell you tell you yeah i don't know i i understand what you're saying let's check the answer Ooh, it's the project charter, charter. that's so what strategy. i would have said because <laughs> the business case is um an explanation for the change you're going to make and okay. that's a kind of a strategy the project charter is here are the resources and the approach we're going to take to do this work. And part of that is analyzing how we're, um, what strategy we're going to use, but that's all downstream. I wanna to draw to your attention, strategies can be included in a project charter, but according to the BABOC, project charters are not even mentioned. So according to the BABOC, this is the right answer. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a little tricky. You still got to remember what the bad box says. Okay, let's move on. You are a BA working at a large retailer and reviewing the documentation for order processing system to understand the current state before working on an enhancement. The enhancement will add a predictive inventory replenishment capability. An increasing problem at your company is that popular products are frequently out of stock. An important part of the existing documentation is the diagram below. Okay, so this is the order processing system. It's a context diagram. So the customer uh, puts in the request, goes into the order processing system, order information goes to accounting, get invoice confirmation, uh, inventory request goes to the management inventory system, product availability returns, Catalog request goes to the warehouse, shipping confirmation returns, and then order confirmation comes back to the customer. But they said, this is where they have problems. Popular items are often out of stock. Does anyone have any questions on this diagram before we go on to the questions? We can go back to the diagram after we check the questions. There's three questions. Which techniques beside a document analysis would you use to help understand the context and need for enhancement? Would it be data mining, root cause analysis, and benchmarking? Workshops, scope modeling, balance scorecard, business model canvas, decision analysis, and SWOT analysis, or data flow diagrams, item tracking, and risk analysis? Before you give me the answer that you think it is, can you tell me why Benchmarking might not be one of the answers. Benchmarking is the comparison of what other businesses are doing. So, um, so that wouldn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, right? Yeah. 
So what do you think the right answer is? It's going to be one of these three. I don't think you would use workshops for this either, which is a B answer. No. I agree with you. So one of these two. And just because we say it, guys, you can challenge us. In fact, I encourage you to challenge us. We'll have a conversation. I just don't fully understand how this question even relates to the case uh, to to the case described. Well, okay, let's go back up to the case. An increasing problem is popular products are frequently out of stock. We've got a context diagram. What else can we look at to uh, talk about <laughs> the enhancement for predictive inventory replenishment capability? So what other techniques can we use for that? Uh, what other techniques can we use to investigate the problem further, right? I, I would say that um, data flow, um, for me, that diagram, which is context diagram, doesn't really <clears throat> show how the warehouse communicates with inventory. So for me, there's something lacking there. <clears throat> I, I find that diagram quite wonky. And um, if you have, I if, if I take item tracking, I haven't read about it, but if I take item tracking, like what I think that is common sense, that it means that I, uh, item tracking, I think that's the basis of the problem for this, that you don't know what you have in the warehouse and therefore you can't potentially, you shouldn't allow something to be ordered if it's not in the warehouse and in your inventory. So that's where I think that the problem is. That's why I think that the closest one it could be D. Um, okay. Item but, tracking, according to the Babock, is there is an issue that needs to be resolved for the project. It's not a, it's not tracking items for the warehouse. Yeah, okay. so that's why I thought that it might not be what I thought it was. <laughs> yep. See, it's I, a red I don't like think, any of these. I think Business Model Campus can tell you the capability of this business flow. Okay. I'm not sure yeah. how decision Business analysis model help. canvas is actually the capabilities of the overall business right i think this said. question is terrible actually and <laughs> the diagram is kind of an architecture diagram it shows you what all the pieces are and the connections but it doesn't show you order or anything else or lodging. So would, would any of these techniques give us that information? A data flow diagram would, right? Um, that's the closest in my little pea brain. I do not know what the bad box says on this. So if um, I were to okay. use, uh, go um, ahead. I, I would vote for A because, I mean, I know you eliminated it, but... Um, Honestly, I would look at what other companies do with this particular problem just to understand if there are any solutions already. And root cause analysis also seems relevant because we need to understand why this is happening and uh, maybe there is some hidden problems that cause lack of uh, products constant okay. level certain problems. Data mining problems. would also be helpful. Data ma mining also seems relevant. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I would vote for A. You know, I like your logic. What does somebody else think? I, I think that she she has a right thought. Oh, I also I thought that root cause analysis will be one of the first one. And data mining can help you identify where the where the issues are happening from the data that you have. Why don't so, we yeah, do this? Well, and it could tell you how often something happened, but not necessarily why. Okay, let's do this and see what we get. Drum roll, please. Hey. It is correct. 
Look at us. All of these yep. techniques yep. would help you understand the current state and the context and need for enhancement. All are listed as techniques to help analyze current state. So here's our task. Hmm. Okay. Next question. Next question is you have studied the diagram and have an idea of which flow starts in order, which flow in the diagram is most likely to start the process. Any of the flows could potentially start the process since the DFD is not a sequentially oriented document. Order and catalog request, order information, or a swim lane diagram would be needed to establish the starting point for an order. Um, I mean, just thinking, you know, the obvious answer would be the order catalog request. I mean, that's if you're thinking of this process, the customer is going to call in. It starts with the customer ordering something. So that's your beginning point. But we could think about it a little bit more and see if we could talk ourselves out of that. Well, that's, <laughs> the, that's the first arrow going down also in the diagram. Right. If you see it says order catalog request with the arrow down. I, I agree. If you start from the top, that does look like it's the first one. Uh, for me, it's so also B is the correct answer, but a more generic answer could be that a swim lane diagram will be needed because like this is because we're using logic is not because we are understanding and interpreting the, the diagram itself It's because we're using logic to identify which one is the first one. But if you use that, that diagram and it was in German and you don't know what it's talking about, there's no way of knowing which one would be the start point. So in a way, B is the right is the is 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 what will be the starters, but D probably is the most correct answer. And it it does say at the beginning of that question, you have studied the diagram. Uh huh. That means that you have an you can get an idea from the diagram. So as an idea from the diagram, I think this is what I heard most people say. Let's check it and see what it says. Oh. We're like. You know. <laughs> Darn it. If these are not sequentially oriented, more information is needed. So this is the only reason I was I was mm. concerned that we might not be right. And I thought we were. Um let's if you just look at this, the inventory management system is always going to be sending product availability to the order processing system. Um that's the only one that I can see that could happen without having an order. They're always going to be saying, you know, we verify we do have 12 of these in stock. Okay, so according to the BABOC, a DFD is not sequentially oriented. And that means we need to go to the techniques chapter, uh, technique 13, and we'll get more information on that should you wish. And remember, oh. that is um, not, an answer directly from the bad box that you could look up at something you had to infer in the logic of the question. And I'm not sure it's a very good question. Let me go ahead and open it up. Let's see what we're talking about because I don't want us to walk away thinking, well, that was a waste of time. It's a okay. true statement what they say. Um, and uh, um, a swim lane diagram definitely um, generally does show you an order because it's a process diagram with an accepted order. Okay, here's where we should have seen it. So this is of data mining. No, I'm sorry, that's not true. It's whatever's before this. This is data flow diagrams. If you go to the limitations, does not illustrate a sequence of activities. That's why we don't know which one starts. It looks like we can figure it out from a context diagram. And honestly, on my context diagrams, I do identify where processes start. But according to the BABOC, that does not illustrate a sequence of activities. Okay, the last question in this series, which flow in the diagram is most likely missing? 
reducing inventory, reduce inventory, new customer information, shipping instructions, or credit card details? I hate this question. I just want to say it now. <laughs> so we are talking about taking inventory out of the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Can you scroll down a little bit? Yes. Where we can see the inventory. So inventory request, product availability. I would say A, reduce inventory. Kind of, it's implement. It, I don't know. It's kind of in product availability, but also at some point, it has to be reduced from the inventory as well. Right. I was looking at this new customer information, shipping instructions. Shipping instructions might be there too, because we're sending out a package, right? It's an order but process. Shipping. Order process. Not customer tracking, not customer You're you know, right. information about, but this center of this is order processed. I, I like your logic. Okay. I, let's I'm guessing. I'm just telling you what I gut feel. Customer. <sighs> okay. Shipping. This Thank flow you. can be assumed since there are shipping confirmation, but no flow to supply the instructions. Mm. It's true. So they did put in an order. They did not provide any instructions as to the shipping information. Instructions. Oh, because I see, because it says shipping confirmation, meaning like we sent it UPS, USPS, right. or whatever, right. UPS. It just So how could you have a confirmation if you didn't do shipping? Right, I agree. I don't like but, this question. I don't like that question. It's a horrible <laughs> it's question. It's level. It's like, like a whole say, level all of that. the time the questions on the actual exam are almost always better than some of the that's good to hear. <laughs> this is a good exercise to um suffer like this though. If we have to suffer, I want to suffer now instead of on the test. Agreed. Agreed. When we get to the test, I want to just know. Yeah, but Which we're playing up. Yeah. <laughs> we're Which playing up to a higher level. And then yes, if we, we drop a little when we do the test, we'll still pass. As Mia yes, always says, it's about the conversation in these meetings mm -hmm. and That's getting right. you to think and wrestle with the material and know where it all is in this big honking book. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following are quantitative benefits that might be included in a business case? Redu reduce inventory from having more accurate counts and thorough and through auto replenishment. Improve customer satisfaction as a result of better website navigation. Reduce def defects as a result of using use case on the project or improve communication between order entry and warehouse staff. I want to see a show of hands. How many of y'all have ever written a business case? Yeah? Uh, partially. Okay. So you know a business case, you're supposed to say, this is why this is going to be a benefit. This is why I want you to give me this amount of money. So, so the answer is C. C, cat. Why do you like C? Yeah, so... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, because like if we eliminate qualitative, like improved satisfaction and D, improved communication, then A and C is what is left and reduced inventory doesn't seem to be a benefit. So reduced effect is, uh, is a real benefit. Uh, reduced defects is going to be talking about actually going through the project. And the method of how you're going to go through the project, I've never seen that on a business case. Think about what's on a business case. Mm -hmm. So CBA, right? So this is the justification of a course of action. So right. it, it it answers why why are we planning to do a certain change? Is well, there a is. business benefit to reducing that the defects? Is that a, a that's usually what I put in business cases? Like, what is the business benefit? 
of this thing that we're asking them for hundreds of thousands of dollars? Okay, then A should be, I mean, maybe A also can count. In reduced inventory, maybe also a benefit. Yeah, but let's say A should ideally be quantifiable. You so could quantify could customer quantify. satisfaction. Yeah, right. I was going to say I could also quantify. I think it's B. But you but kind it's not, of can, no. it's loser. Okay. I heard a lot of different answers. Do I have two people that agree on any of it? Yeah, a. for me, B and D are, are qualitative, not quantitative, because they are they are about improvements. It's not really um, measurable, like customer right. satisfaction, unless you do a benchmark, benchmark and stuff through right. Yeah. So, better website I, I navigation so the, the how do you measure the better website navigation and how do you um relate it to the customer satisfaction there may be indirect ways to measure that again this isn't necessarily a great question but it makes you think yeah i like i do like a i just come from a customer service background and we were always trying to improve customer service at one point but i i would say from a quantifiable standpoint i could see how babak would say customer service probably isn't so i would say i'd agree with a okay. so so you you think that reduced inventory it can be considered as benefit right and no if inventory is an no. issue the whole idea was going something uh, with something quantitative. That's a rule of thumb. It's a preference. People will do projects just because they feel like it'll help, even if they can't put a hard number on it. And that comes down to entrepreneurial judgment which uh, is a thing that formal economists actually wrestle with quite extensively. Okay, uh, let's see. <sighs> Carl, you said you think it's A? I'll go with A too. I okay. think A as well. Watch, that's the kiss of death right there. If I think it's A, <laughs> it won't be right. But it's correct. Oh, no, all right. Benefit can be measured financially, so it's considered quantitative. Mm. Now, my eyes sometimes see qualitative and quantitative as the same word, but I have to go to quantity and, and get this so I can know that it has to have a number. Go, Ben. Yes. <laughs> I got one right. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel. <laughs> return on investment roi is a key component in any form of financial analysis contained within a business case what <coughs> does it stand for sorry guys so it's c c c <laughs> here i am being helpful that's the that one part you get. Hey. see i'm being a business me. analyst i'm helping translate as we go i'll try to stop doing that i More like return on intelligence <laughs> Mora is a BA facilitating a discussion with stakeholders regarding the implementation strategy for a solution. The sponsor is pressuring the team to implement the solution by year end, their busiest time of year with the holidays. She ensures the conversation takes into consideration which of the following critical factors. Minimal disruption to business activities and related organizational impacts. Ability to train end users by year end, given the fact that this is their busiest time of year. Availability with the delivery team due to the holidays. And availability of the delivery team due to the holidays and resources, vacation schedules, or key stakeholder requirements. According to the Babock, which one is this? So if I'm at implementation, I've already got the requirements. And she's talking with stakeholders. 
sometimes implementation timeline is a part of requirements, sometimes it necessarily isn't, but for the fact that A, B, and C all kind of set the same scenario and precedence, I'd probably go with D. I'd point them back to the requirements and say, this is why we need to um, implement at a specific time. Because <coughs> all of these- I would I'd go with D too. It's key stakeholder requirements. Yep. Okay. Got two answers for D. Let's see what we get. <laughs> okay. This response is too high level. So we should have chosen minimal disruption to business activities and rela related organizational impacts. You can infer this is the most critical factor of those listed given the business activity at the year end. Oh, okay. Goodness. As a BA assigned to improve the enterprise process to realize effect efficiency gains, which of the following analytic techniques would provide the most value? Would it be value stream mapping, racy matrix, activity diagrams, or a SIPOC? We want to improve the enterprise processes to realize efficiency gains. What are we doing about processes for analytics? Okay, guys, does racy have anything to do with processes? No. No, no. we can eliminate that one. Indirectly, it does, but only indirectly. Right. According to the Babock. Value stream mapping. Tell me why you like that one. This is the technique of which is used to analyze the processes and um, um, and to, you know, to make, to, sorry, I have a terrible headache. Um, let me skip the explanation, okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have a different idea or anyone else agree? Um, I, I, um, I, I really don't know which one it is, but I, I think the value stream mapping is um, efficiency gains will be value. So um, having a value stream mapping will will see you will be able to see where it, where things provide value to the organization, um, which processes do, but um, potentially the only one that has the process one is the last one is the seed book. Okay. Got two votes for SIPOC, one by chat. Let's check the answer. A SIPOC may be completed initially to understand the, hi the high level process, but it's too high to deliver the most value. An activity diagram are types of process model notifications that reflect process steps, roles, parallel processing, and multiple exit decision points. So, of the options listed, this would deliver the most value. Can I make a comment here? And that is that this is um, a case where you kind of have to feel out the bad box. Um, the way I think about process mapping, value stream mapping, sidewalk activity diagrams, all that, is I don't think of it the same way. Um, the bad bug does and um that's because all the concepts are kind of jumbled up in my mind i've been doing it forever i mean since dinosaurs roamed the earth and um there are so many ways to show anything that you can attach costs and benefits to every process and it just becomes really hard to tease everything out. I like this answer, though, that I, I don't even, because SIPOC and activity diagrams, um, uh, the fact they say it's high level, it's ridiculous. Because every box of uh, a diagram down to whatever level you do sidebog on all of them. So that whole business makes no sense to me. You want me to say this is wonky? 
Yes. Wait, wait, okay. to me, it's just uh, activity. It doesn't say anything about the value or efficiency gains, right? So value stream mapping shows how value is transferred. And that's this a is... really great argument. I mean, but the point is that when you um figure out how much the operating and installed and uh, maintenance costs are for every phase, every um, workstation, every material, every individual operation, you do that at the level of the activity diagram, which is just a whole bunch of side pogs together. So that's why the whole thing is goofy. I mean, okay. uh, value I stream agree. mapping is what brings value to the enterprise at every step. And right. it's kind of mushy. I would have chosen SIPOC uh, too, because I got a, I'm, a, I'm certified in Six Sigma. You can do a high level SIPOC or you can do a very granular SIPOC. Right, right. So, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, but, but does it does it say anything about efficiency gains? Cypoc. You um, have to go ahead, Cole. I mean, it does talk <laughs> about so the, the I mean the O is the output. And so I mean at the end of the day, you know, you talk about you can talk you can infer efficiencies through the output and the value to the customer within a CIPOC. But yeah, <laughs> the is sidebar is really a, quant a qualitative description of what goes in, what transformations happen, and what goes out, and where the stuff that comes in comes from, and where the stuff that goes out goes to. All right. But then you have the quantitative part, which is where you characterize all those nouns and verbs. Those are your adjectives and adverbs. So um, the nouns and verbs give you the basis for identifying what adjectives and adverbs you use to calculate the improvement. Okay. So that's why these things are all intermingled. And this is a difficult question. It is. And I did note it as wonky. Okay. Farouk is a business analyst working with a business owner to define the business requirements related to a new opportunity in his organization. He works in a company that produces bathroom fixtures. The company is known not only for high end fixtures that are sold worldwide, but for its outstanding customer service. What factors will Farouk consider in order to document business requirements? Farouk needs to needs a thorough understanding of the opportunity and possible benefits given organizational constraints. Farouk needs understanding of the cost of doing nothing. In other words, not pursuing the opportunity. The underlying source of the opportunity and the associated risk and their costs. Farouk will focus on understanding why the change is needed along with expected benefits from pursuing this opportunity. I would say D. I like D as well offhand. But I Why could like I'm, most band. Um because we're focusing on the need. So you you when you're a business analyst, you know, your number one job is to find the need. You know, why what is the need? And so he should be understanding why then why they think this is needed and what the benefits are, what the expected benefits are. So why do they want to pursue it and what do they expect to get out of it? Makes I like sense. It. I, like I personally too. like it because there is a word why. And since business requirements is all about why, this seems to be the most relevant. The five That's whys, keep asking why, 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 why. Let's so Farouk should always be it. asking why. 
Dang it. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. So this one talks about why the change is needed and what the expected benefits. This one talks about possible benefits. I don't understand it. The word thorough is key here is business requirements are primary output for the analyzed current state task. Understanding constraints is also specifically mentioned in this definition of business requirements. This answer pertains more to the business need than the business requirements. Oh, that's true, isn't it? Why is the change needed? And we, we wanted to document the business requirements. Yeah. That we part, were... I understand. Yeah, I get it. Okay. okay. It's the right answer in the wrong context. Right. Okay, financial re resources, patents, reputation, and brand names are all example of which of the following elements? Is it business architecture, internal assets, macroeconomic factors, and capabilities? Guys, are all those words in the Babok? I think it's D, capabilities. Why do you like D? I kind of recall reading it in the Babok. Okay. I would say internal assets, B as boy. And, okay. I know you have a headache, so I won't keep asking why. Anybody else? Uh, because uh, because the yeah, brand name, reputation, all those things are assets, right? So they are something valuable that our organization possesses. Okay, I've got two uh, votes, one for B and one for D. I agree with I, B. I, I'd go with B. B as boy. B as a boy, okay, multiple votes for B and that is correct. Babak also calls these enterprise assets. So the word assets is, is in the Babak. Awesome. An organization seeks to increase employee satisfaction within the next year. What is this an example of? Is it a business objective, a business goal, business requirement, or potential value, according to the Babak? B, business goal. I can't remember the definition of objective on goal, but it sounds like it's A or B for me. It's A with or B, you. maybe. I think it's A or B, and it's just a question of which one is in the Babak. <laughs> what right. Business goal or a, business objective? I, I think, uh, I think go goals a. and objectives are both in the Babak. Yeah. I think it's A. That's my... <laughs> Vote, but that's fine. I would say A. Okay, we got several A's. Let's go with A and see what we get. Oh, it was B. We talked ourselves okay. out of it. it. So, <laughs> a business goal is a statement or a state of or condition that an organization is seeking seeking to establish or maintain. This is a not colossally enough. stupid because. The diagram on page one or two explicitly lists business objectives as an output to this chapter's task. Yeah, because I remember business objective. Yeah. I don't recall. I, mean, uh, I love the one more question. They need to put the crack pipe down and slowly back away. Okay, what page did you say, Bob? 102 is okay. the first overall diagram in uh, chapter six. Get to 102, almost there. Is it this diagram? No, one more. Not that Keep diagram. Going that one. Down at the bottom. Outputs. Mm -hmm. Right there. Okay. Can you search business goal 
because I was thinking that same thing. Does Mrs. Goal even show up in here? <laughs> Anywhere. Um, that does. Mm -hmm. Okay, at least it's in the bad box. Uh, yeah, it's that's interesting. What chapter is in that in? Uh, it says I am in solution evaluation. Oh, solution evaluation. Yeah, I think um, it's, in uh, page one third is no, one thirteen. It says business goals and objectives. One one three. Wow. The page um, number. So we need to to look at the Continue glossary. Going down. We need to look at the glossary. There are two definitions: one for business objective and one for business goal. That's so a good idea. So if you go to glossary, you will see the real definitions. So yeah, so business goal is a condition. Yeah, and business objective is something measurable, and that that's why our answer was. So incorrect. goals are qualitative. Yeah, it looks like that. Goals are qualitative. Objective there are, are, uh, indicates that this measurable. goal has been achieved. Okay. So that's if we a definition, definition a it's too precious, I think. The whole bad ball could be better on that. It, it's so hard to be concise with language. Um, over a large document with multiple authors. That's true. Um, so I forgive them on this. And and we thank you for that. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay, I wrote the glossary, but you know, no one said this is how it's going to be used in the rest of the book. I just wrote the glossary. It's a great glossary. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> which of the following statements best describe the common test for assessing business objectives? Specific, manageable, achievable, relevant, time-bound. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, relevant time bound or specific measurable achievable relevant testable which one of these is smart guys c, c. as in charlie yes y'all are smart wow they, they gave us an easy one for a change thank you for that but it's only easy because you know it every time you learn something else that piece gets easy Kathy is analyzing the current state and working with her team and stakeholders to identify and define why the what quested change is needed? What is the output of the task Kathy's working on? So before we go any further, which task in this knowledge area are we talking about? And the life got to say. I had the requested changes needed. So is this define? Define current state, uh, analyze current state. Okay, analyze current state. So what is the output of analyze current state? Is it business goals, business requirements, stakeholder engagement report, re approach, or elicitation results? Confirmed. B? A or B, I think. BS boy? We've got B as a boy. Anybody else? Check page 104. Let it be B. Okay, let's check this answer, and that is correct. Right. I'm going <laughs> to um, actually maybe <laughs> quibble with that. I'm moving a real pain um, this evening. I apologize. So when you analyze the current state, you want that to uh, um, reflect the business needs in terms of what you're doing now and how you want it to change, but that's not all of it. Um, there, if you're doing something new, there won't be a current state. 
So your business requirements have to come from elsewhere. So if you're doing a simulation of the current state, then the requirements are to represent everything that's in it. And that would be an output. Um, uh, except for some uh, simplifications and so on. But um, 6.1, the current state description is probably way more accurate. And the business needs are kind of in parallel to this, but not strictly flowing out of it. They can come from other places. Well, it gave us business requirements as one of the options, and it did not give us current state description. And we, so we chose business requirements and we uh, got it. I right. get that you have to attach to the book, but you the thing the book. is, the book could be better on this count. In real life, this isn't always the way we do it. We are at the end of our time. I'm going to uh, submit the exam. We've only gone halfway through it. So, we made a 48 on this test, guys. Uh, do you want to repeat <clears throat> this chapter this next week? Or do you want to sure. go on to the next chapter? No, repeat. Yeah, I think we, I hate to say it, but I think we need to. I mean, and this is a tough chapter for people too. I know people have told me this is one of their tough chapters to get. Because like you said, it's conceptual. There's a lot of tricky answers in here. Right. Um, so maybe we okay. need to do some more study. I would vote to try to do it again. We will repeat strategy analysis next week. I want to give a big shout out to the, uh, the people who are being our gatekeepers who are keeping people out of here that should not be in here. Uh, if you did not attend last week, you are glad that you didn't. Those of you who did attend, we're all traumatized. I have not been able to edit that video. I just can't. Um, we're going to keep going and we're going to get successful and we're going to do strategy <laughs> analysis again next week. Please study and let's get better and better together. Okay. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. Please reach out to me if there's anything I can do. I did put some questions in the chat for a couple of you directly. If you haven't checked your chat, you might check it just to be sure that you got your questions or your comments and <laughs> I will see you next week. I hope you all have a wonderful time. Have fun. But yeah, I just I just want to let you know that I, I had some problems with the link of the Zoom meeting today. So we we okay. changed we had to change the link. We were Zoom okay. bombed last week. We got to see things that we should never have to see. And <laughs> uh, so we had to change the link and that we're going to continue to use this link, but this new link has a waiting room on it. And Cliff is keeping people out that shouldn't come in. So you can probably, Cliff, we're going to be using the same link from now on, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this I is will the new update link. my website for right. the new link. I waited to see um, that uh, this one worked before that update. Right. So I apologize for any confusion. Not a problem. Uh, once again, reach out to me if y'all have any questions, if you need encouragement, if you need the template for the application, I've updated it so it automatically calculates hours for us and, and tells us if you, it tells you if you've gotten it all. Also, I put in my own application the other day and found out that I was making it a lot harder on myself on the spreadsheet that I had to. I'll give you those hints and tricks if you want to. So, so just reach out to me. Okay. I'll see y'all next Carol. time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tim. See you next week. Oh, yeah, thanks, yes, Carl. everyone. In the beginning of the meeting, you talked Carl, about what did you updating our <clears throat> chapter information. Uh, yes. But we are now, I, and I pulled up my um, profile on IBA, and it says something like totally different. So how do I? You know how to? How do how do we update the chapter information? Uh, let me let me give you an email address. It is uh, I tell you what, I'll send it to you on LinkedIn, okay? And okay. just let them know, and and they'll be able to reach out and help you. Okay. Okay. See y'all later.
All right, guys. See you.